Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Nicholas Richardson and this is the news. Poland has no plans to evacuate the families of its embassy staff in Kiev, the Deputy Foreign Minister Pavel Jabłonski announced as relatives of United States embassy staff were ordered to leave the Ukrainian capital. Meanwhile, President Andrzej Duda spoke to the Minister of National Defense, Mariusz Błaszczak, Minister of Internal Affairs and Administration, Mariusz Kaminski, and the heads of the armed services on the situation in Ukraine. Later this evening, Polish President Andrzej Duda will participate in a conference call with United States President Joe Biden, United Kingdom Prime Minister Boris Johnson, President of France Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, and other world leaders to discuss the situation in Ukraine. This afternoon, the Polish President spoke to Ministers of Defence, Home Security and the heads of the armed services to share the outcome of his talks last week with the President of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, and to set the agenda for further talks with NATO allies. In the current situation, the most important important things are to coordinate with our allies and partners from the European Union, determined international action and, of course, our bilateral Polish-Ukrainian actions. According to the Ukrainian intelligence services, an invasion of Ukraine by Russian troops could occur in early February, and the attack could come from three sides simultaneously – Russia, Belarus and occupied Crimea. Determination is not lacking in either the Ukrainian people or the newly rebuilt army. This will not be a, as easy an invasion as in 2014 when the Russians captured Crimea and destabilized the Donbass. As Russia builds up its military in and around Ukraine, NATO countries are sending additional ships and fighter jets to Eastern Europe. In turn, Joe Biden is considering sending up to 5,000 additional troops to countries on NATO's eastern flank. In the event of an escalation, their number could rise to as many as 50,000. Several countries have declared an increased military presence on the eastern flank. This is good news, but it is not enough to deter Putin from attacking, should he decide to do so. Stoltenberg, Secretary General of NATO, said that additional battle groups can be deployed in Eastern Europe. Residents in Ukraine's second biggest city, Kharkiv, hope for the best but prepare for the worst as tensions between their country and Russia grows. The mayor of Kharkiv, Igor Tarekhov, has said that the city will be calm and collected and that he wanted to reassure residents that he would not allow anybody to take their city. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky told the Washington Post earlier that Russia may try to occupy the industrial city of Kharkov if it takes military action in Ukraine and this will be the start of a large-scale war. Zelensky said that he believed this scenario was feasible following Russia's annexation of Crimea from Ukraine in 2014. In fact, I am very scared. I have many colleagues out there and they are worried. Almost every work meeting starts with my English colleagues asking, how are you there? What has Putin come up with now? We calm them down by saying that for some years now, seven years, the situation has been under control. Let them try. Uh, yeah. I follow the news, but I cannot wrap my head around it, that it is even possible. Yeah. Nobody thought that this could happen to Crimea. Nobody could imagine that. I do not want to believe it, but we do not know what will happen next. Run? No. No way. I was born here. I grew up here. I am staying here no matter what. And if I have to join the city defense, I'll do it. Our neighbor is sick, you know. He can do anything, rattle the saber. But he won't go any further, I think. Well, you know, suppose he will go further, then what? Will he even? They already were welcomed here, so they have learnt that it's better to stay away. Or they will go back to their home in zinc coffins, and their mothers will cry. Russia, which has tens of thousands of troops near the border, has denied it plans to attack Ukraine. Kharkiv, in eastern Ukraine, lies 42 kilometers from the border and has a population of about 1.4 million. It was the capital of Ukraine from 1919 to 1933, when it was part of the Soviet Union and is home to tank and tractor factories, as well as electronic producers. The chairman of the Supreme Audit Office, Mariam Banash, and his son Jakub Banash were summoned to the Polish Parliament to explain why a delegation from the Supreme Audit Office had visited Belarus last December, while 20,000 Polish soldiers were guarding the border, and Belarus was creating the humanitarian crisis at the Polish border. Supreme Audit Office officials say that the reason for the visit was to survey the management of the Białowieża forest. Half a century ago, Poland began to rebuild the Royal Castle in Warsaw. The historic building was damaged in September 1939, but in December 1944, the retreating German forces set explosive charges to completely destroy it. Only after almost 30 years, in 1972, did the reconstruction begin. Professor Wojciech Farkowski, the director of the Royal Castle, has presented the plans for the celebrations. In May, we will put on an exhibition about the Royal Library as the ruler's study cabinet, as a meeting place, a place of reflection and debate, 
and a place where the king himself exuded erudition and knowledge. The second exhibition is the Norblin collection, oil paintings and prints by Norblin, which we want to show in a separate exhibition. The third exhibition, in collaboration with the Dresden Gallery, will celebrate the 300th anniversary of the birth of Bernardo Bellotto, known to us as Canaletto. We will show his paintings and engravings. His art shows us the phenomenon of the 18th century city. That's the news. Thank you for watching. Stay with us for the weather. Poland Daily Business and more programs. But from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.